Hi, first graders. Welcome back. This is week six, day three. For today's lesson, you will need your thinking cap, your listening ears, a pencil, your crayons, and your modules three and four EL workbook. If you don't have these materials ready, just press pause, then press play when you're ready to learn. Hopefully you have your materials gathered. You can take all of your materials and put them to the side because we won't need them until the end of our lesson. We're going to start our lesson today by looking at this Verbs Shades of Meaning Anchor Chart. We have been talking about verbs at the beginning of our lessons for this week and for week five. We've learned that verbs are those action words. You'll see at the top of these two columns that I have the weak verb with only two bars filled in and our strong verbs that have almost all the verbs filled in. These are verbs that mean the same thing with small differences. For example, I know that break means to separate into two or more pieces. I know that crack means to break without splitting into pieces. They both have similar meanings, but break is a stronger verb than crack. We're going to use this chart to help us play a little game. During our game, I'm going to pick a row and you will act out the verb that you see. Our weak verbs, our strong verbs, and over here we have bird names. These bird names tell us what birds do those things or those verbs. For example, a sparrow might jab, leap, or break. A hummingbird might gulp or drink nectar or sugar. Let's get started. Let's start with crack or break. Can you show me how a sparrow would crack or break? Yeah. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. What about, ooh, drink or gulp? A hummingbird might drink or gulp. Can you show me that verb? Good job. Let's try one more. Mmm, chop or slice. A skimmer might chop or slice. Show me those verbs. Good job. We're able to act out those verbs because verbs are action words. Let's read our learning targets now that our bodies and our minds are all warmed up. Our first target says, I can research information about different types of bird beaks using the text beaks. This target probably sounds familiar because this is the target that we've been working on this week. Our second target says, I can explain the purpose of a hummingbird's beak using pictures and words. Let's look back at the first target at the top of the screen. We have already started our research. Think back to day one. We looked at a hummingbird, an eagle, and a woodpecker. Nod your head if you remember those three birds from our text, beaks. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, as you watched the read aloud and we read the text, what did those bird beaks do. Do you remember? Let's start with the hummingbird. What did the hummingbird's beak do? Mm-hmm. 
That's right. The hummingbirds drink nectar from the flowers. And what about the eagle's beak? Mm-hmm. Good. And what about the woodpecker's beak? That's right. Now let's use that information that you just shared to keep track in our chart. How do birds use their beaks to survive? Last week we did the macaw. Our first lesson this week, we looked at the hummingbird, eagle, and woodpecker, so we can add those to our chart now. Describe the beak of the hummingbird. Long and thin. And you tell me that the hummingbird reaches into flowers for nectar. And we'll put a picture so that we can see the hummingbird's beak. What about the eagle? Describe the eagle's beak. Mm-hmm. That's right, it's a hooked beak. And it's strong. And why does the eagle have a hooked beak? What does it use its beak for? That's right, it tears scales and flesh so that it can eat. There's a zoomed up picture of that hooked beak. And last but not least, the woodpecker. What does the woodpecker's beak look like? That's right, it's sturdy and it's strong so that it can do its job. How does the woodpecker, woodpecker's beak help the bird to survive? It pounds holes in trees for insects and hides food. Now let's add a picture to help us remember. Now we have four different kinds of beaks on our how do birds use their beaks to survive chart. But you'll notice at the bottom of the chart we have three empty rows. Let's dive back into our text, Beaks and find some more information that we can put in our chart. Let's start on this page. Take a moment to make some observations. The words on the page or in the text are small, but try to follow along with me. Beaks are even made upside down. Flamingos. A flamingo's beak looks ridiculous until you see how the, flamingos, how the flamingo eats. Flamingos feed with their heads upside down. Standing in shallow lakes and marshes, they draw water through their beaks using their muscular tongues as pumps. Special strainers in their beak filter out the tiny plants and animals that the flamingo eats. Pigments in these foods give flamingos their bright, dizzying colors. Wow, that's an interesting beak. How could we describe the beak? What does our heading tell us? Beaks are even made upside down. Yes. Do you think we should add this beak to our chart? Mm-hmm. So let's fill our flamingo's beak right under the woodpecker. How would you describe this beak? Yeah, let's put upside down to remind us of that funny shape of the beak. Now, how does this upside down beak help the bird to survive? How does it help the bird survive? Mm-hmm. It catches and it filters food. And of course, let's put in a picture so that we can see that ridiculous upside down beak. <laughs> Our next bird is the skimmer. Try to follow along with me. 
A skimming beak. Skimmers. Like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. The bottom bill is longer than the top. The skimmer puts its backwards beak to good use. To hunt, the bird flies with its lower bill slicing below the water surface. When it strikes a fish, the bird snaps its beak shut, trapping the fish in a scissor-like grip. In this way, skimmers can catch fish without even getting wet. And friends, if you look really closely at our illustrations here, you can see how the top part of the beak stays out of the water and they put the bottom part of their beak in the water, kind of like a net catching those fish. Let's add the skimmer to our chart. Our heading tells us it is a skimming beak. We'll use the word uneven to describe how the beak looks. If you look in our illustration, you can see that the top beak is shorter than the bottom part of the beak. How does this beak help the bird survive? Mm-hmm. It traps fish. And let's add a picture to help us remember. There is a real life photograph of a skimmer. Interesting. When we look at all of these beaks, they're all so different, aren't they? They have different jobs and they look different. We have one more row at the very bottom of our chart. So let's keep reading. Ooh, these are spoon bills. Try to follow along with me. A swishing beak. Spoon bills. Spoon bills have flat paddle-like paddle-shaped beaks. To find food, spoon bills wade into shallow water and swish their open beaks back and forth. At the same time, the birds use their feet to stir up mud and the animals in it. Like skimmers, they hunt by touch, snapping their beaks closed on insects, fish, and other prey. Hunting in groups probably helps spoonbills stir up more food than hunting alone. Wow, so their beak is kind of like a spoon. Maybe that's why they're called spoonbills. And they stir up that mud. Let's add them to our chart. Tell me. How would you describe their beak? Mm-hmm. Good, let's add the words flat paddle. Now, how does this flat paddle-shaped beak help the spoonbill to survive? What does it do down in the water? That's right, it stirs mud to find food. Let's put in a real photograph of the spoonbill's beak. It really does look like a spoon, doesn't it? <laughs> now our chart is full. Wow, look how many beaks we've recorded. Seven different types of beaks that all look different and have different jobs to help those birds survive. I'd say that we've done some pretty good research about different types of bird beaks using that text, beaks. I think we can check that target off. Our next target says, I can explain the purpose of a hummingbird's beak using pictures and words. Do you remember the purpose of the hummingbird's beak. Let's go back and find it on our chart. Find the picture of the hummingbird. Point to it. Right there. We said that the beak was long and thin and that it reaches into flowers for nectar. Can you restate that purpose to me? 
What does the hummingbird's beak do? Mm -hmm. That's right, it reaches into the flower to get the nectar. Before we start writing, we need to prepare for independent work. Get out that EL workbook and go to page 18. You'll know you're there when your page looks like this. If you haven't found page 18 yet, just press pause and then press play once you've found it. Let's look at page 18 together. At the top, it reads, Birds Research Notebook, Part 2, Page 5. Hummingbird Beak. Add a detailed hummingbird beak to the silhouette below. Wow, this bird is already drawn for you. All you have to do is add the beak. Now, what kind of beak are you going to add? Look back at our, look back at our picture to decide what your beak should look like. Should it be upside down? Should it be uneven? Should it be a spoon, a hook, a long thin beak, or a heavy beak? That's right, it needs to be a long thin beak. You are going to add a detailed hummingbird beak to the silhouette. Make sure that you label it beak. At the bottom of the page, you're going to identify what the purpose is and write a sentence. It says, what is the purpose of the beak? Write your sentence on the lines describing how the beak helps the hummingbird survive. I've given you an up close photograph of a real hummingbird in flight. Remember, follow the directions to complete the research notebook page. I'll leave this here so that you can complete your observational drawing. You're only drawing the beak. After you've drawn the beak, feel free to add in the beautiful colors of the hummingbird. Then write your sentence at the bottom of the page. I'll see you next time. Bye friends. I'm going to leave this on the screen just for a few moments to help you get started. You can press pause if you'd like to copy over the beak from the photograph.